Not Watch World, you can head on over to a uh, 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 Pebble uh, Kickstarter website and you can uh, 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 secure yourself one of these watches that now have the, the ability to connect to your cell phone, which I think is what these smart watches really are going to excel at if they can get that right. And companies like Apple and, and LG and um, <laughs> Samsung, all these different companies that are looking to get back into the smart watch game may take that into note so that they too when they come out with their smart watches, they will come out, you know, uh, successfully and not just come out. <laughs> and as you can see, um, uh, the Pebble watch has a nice screen on it. That hello that you saw right there, that wasn't the size of the screen. That was just in the screen. It has a nice screen. And so, you know, I mean, this really can, um, um, this really can um, improve uh, wearable computing. And it's, it's a less intrusive form of wearable computing. Uh, rather than like Google Glass, that's something that you have to wear on your head and, and things like that. And speaking of Google Glass, even Congress now has gotten into the, uh, into the mix when it comes to Google Glass. Because according to a report by a lot of the uh, uh, tech outlets like um, The Verge and, and, and TechCrunch and so forth, <coughs> Congress asked the Google CEO if Glass infringes on the privacy of average Americans. Now, you know it was only a matter of time before something like this uh, came out in terms of uh, uh, hitting Congress and getting the full press of people around because as uh, Google Glass becomes more, uh, uh, comes closer to launching for the regular person, uh, uh, just like with the printed 3D gun we talked about last week where someone printed a 3D gun from a 3D printer and then they um, uh, uh, shot a bullet from the gun and the bullet fired perfectly, no flaws in it. And then they released those designs online and Congress stepped in right away and told them they had to pull, pull those designs down from the internet. They didn't want anyone having plans to print 3D guns made of plastic that cannot be detected, you see? So they had to take those things down. And now Congress is getting involved in Google Glass. And they're asking Google CEO, they said, um, um, is this thing infringing on the privacy of others? And uh, according to this uh, report here by um, The Verge, they said that uh, um, for all that has been said about the tremendous innovation of Google Glass, privacy concerns have only grown louder since the product's introduction last year. As Google's Explorer edition continues, its staggering rollout, Congress is finally seeking answers and the Congressional Bipartisan Privacy Caucus to, uh, 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 last week, uh, they wrote a letter to CEO Larry Page, he's the CEO you know, of uh, Google, asking uh, him to clear up once and for all whether this new technology would infringe on the privacy of the average American because Google Glass has not yet been released and, and uh, uh, um, Congress is saying that we are uncertain of Google's plans to incorporate privacy protection into the devices, uh, the letter reads. And the letter also read that they sent uh, to Google, they said there are still a number of unanswered questions that we share. The first question revolves around a sore point in Google's history, the unauthorized collection of personal data via Wi-Fi networks by the company's Street View cars, which led to a $7 million settlement with the United States and fines overseas from Google. Because as you know, um, when you use um, Google, uh, Google Earth, uh, their ability to, their collection of data where they get right down even into your homes, not inside, but right by your yard. They can see your car, you know, and now Google Earth actually has, uh, you know, there are some buildings that have decided to participate in it that you can actually enter into these buildings and you can walk around in buildings that you've never seen before and stuff like that. A lot of, a lot of companies are allowing uh, Google to have this inside map information, you know saying, of their structures. And so uh, 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 when Google Earth first came out, a lot of people cried foul and said, man, this is just too much. I mean, you can see where I am anywhere, you know, in the world and stuff like that. They said, this is too much. And there are a lot of people that saying that privacy, once you leave your home, is out the window. Forget about it. But here's my, uh, uh, here's my opinion on that as far as privacy being out the window. Yes, when you walk outside of your home into a public area, you're in the public. So you go into a Target store, 
you know, cameras have been there for years. Walmart, all these different stores, they've had security cameras for years. You walk on the street, there's cameras there, there's cameras at street lights to catch speeders or people running the red lights, all this type of stuff. So having cameras in public is not really the issue, I think, with Google Glass. It's not the same thing because when you're in public and you're on camera, you're, a, you're one voice in a crowd. You're one voice in a whole choir when it comes to uh, uh, being on camera. When you're in a store, people aren't necessarily zeroing in on you per se. They're just looking at the store in general to see if anybody is doing anything. So you're not being singled out. And then certainly your information is not being uploaded to YouTube or uploaded to, to Dailymotion or some other uh, uh, digital uh, video site for the world to see. Those uh, files are kept internal and they're just there for either the state or for the uh, store protection or whatnot. So you're personally not really being singled out. And then most of the times, the cameras in these stores are not high definition. So you can't really see a good image of an individual. You've see, all seen those uh, uh, videos on cops or whatever, where a store catches somebody stealing something and the video isn't that great. Most people have not upgraded to HD cameras simply because they're expensive, especially in the security world. However, the difference with Google Glass is that Google Glass is a high, has high definition video capturing capability and you can upload this information directly to YouTube and most of the videos that people shoot will be of a more personal nature. So rather than, so when you go into a, a target or whatnot and the video that's shot is of a general nature, everyone coming in, everyone going out, no one person specifically. With Google Glass, I have this thing on, I'm going over to uh, somebody's house and I don't know if you're recording or you're not recording, you just have this thing on your head, you know, and maybe you're recording my personal stuff and then in addition to that, you, how you, you can upload that to YouTube with a few clicks of the uh, Google Glass. And so that's what I think Congress is really talking to uh, Larry Page and Google about. Not necessarily because people are saying, well, you know, privacy is a non-issue when you go outside your house. It's like, yes, we get that. But it's the personal uh, uh, nature of Google Glass that people are talking about. It's not the one voice in a crowd where I'm just one of many people that is going past this camera, so who knows? It's the personal nature where I see you specifically or I'm going over to your house or I'm going over to where you work and, and you are on camera specifically, you know, and that information has the ability to be uploaded in a flash up into YouTube if the person has their, a YouTube account. So this is where Larry Page and Google is going to have to address this type of situation. When they come up with Google Glass, they're going to have to decide how they're going to let others know. It's like with a cell phone. When you have your cell phone, you're taking a picture, you hold it up, everybody knows you're taking a video or you're taking a picture or something like that. Yes, you can set it down sneaky on the side and take video and stuff like that. You could do that, but you know most people have their cameras up and you can basically tell if someone is doing it. When I have on Google Glass, right now, there's no way to tell if I'm recording on it or not. That's the, uh, in the developer's kits, there's no way to tell. Now, a lot of people um, say that there is a little light. Now, a lot of people say, I've seen usage of the Google Glass and there's a little light in that upper right uh, uh, display. There's a little light that's on, which is probably the screen that people are seeing. And uh, people say, well, when I'm recording, you see this little light that's on. However, Google Glass has already been hacked to do different things. You see, because remember, Google has the ability to track Google Glass. And there was a guy that came out a while ago that said he was able to hack into it while eating dinner and turn off that tracking ability. So I'm sure someone can figure out how to hack Google Glass to turn off even the light. So this is what Congress is talking about. What can you do to ensure that this is going to not infringe on the personal privacy of everyone. We're not talking about the public privacy, the voice in a crowd situation. We're talking about the personal privacy of others, the things that the voice, the, the cameras out there just not gonna capture, but Google Glass can capture, you see? And also the government is all, also sore to Google because you know Google has uh, the ability to capture information in a way that's uh, not the same as them. So we're gonna have to see how this thing uh, really uh, affects, um, when I say affects, how it affects the consumer coming, uh, coming uh, in these uh, coming months because Google has a lot of time. 
Google has a lot of time to perfect Google Glass because according to Google, this thing is not coming out until sometime, as they say, sometime in 2014. So, I mean, you know, uh, uh, you know don't worry about it. I mean, it's what they're, what they're trying to say. If you got time, man, I mean, relax is what uh, Google is trying to tell uh, the government. We have time to fix it. And as a matter of fact, that's why Google came out with their, um, came out with their, uh, this, this uh, uh, test version. That's the reason why they came out with it, because they wanted, to, uh, they wanted to be able to work out the kinks. They wanted to be able to work out the kinks of their Google Glass project, and they wanted uh, developers and real people to, um, um, uh, real people to be able to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, develop for this thing so that they can really develop something that uh, uh, is going to be a good product for people uh, around there. So we have to we have to wait and see how this is going to affect um, uh, how this is going to affect um, Google Glass and 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 um, uh, different things like that. How is how the development of it? How they're going to put security in there? How this is going to affect uh, uh, the development of Google Glass? Now we are uh, uh, talking about uh, Google and whatnot, but let's jump to another major, major uh, company, um, and that is uh, Yahoo. Yahoo, remember we said last week, uh, or earlier this week, that Yahoo was looking to buy a company called Tumblr. And uh, they were trying to scoop that, uh, that, that um, uh, company up before, they were trying to scoop that company up before um, uh, uh, Facebook got their hands in it, you know, because, you know, they didn't want Facebook again to offer another service because Facebook has just come is just becoming a uh, you know they're just becoming a whole conglomerate of services you know uh, uh, to offer people and uh, Yahoo really wants to get back into the game they really want to get back in the game and Marissa Meyer taken over uh, almost a year ago now she's uh, bought about ten startup companies and add them to the Yahoo banner one of the biggest is Sumly, that company that uh, uh, gets snippets of information around the web and puts it into bite-sized uh, uh, categories so that you can read uh, uh, chunk size of information uh, is what Yahoo bought. Now, there was, uh, they were rumored to buy, uh, looking to buy uh, Tumblr. And Tumblr, uh, 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 is a, for those of you that don't know, is a microblogging platform and social uh, uh, networking website similar to... Um, um, Similar to uh, Blogger for uh, Google, how Google has Blogger, you know, Tumblr uh, is it would be that for Yahoo. Now the only and Tumblr already has an existing user install base of over a hundred and eight million people. So the question then became now, you know, the question then became um, would Marissa Meyer buy Tumblr and would she uh, destroy it, kind of like what happened with Flickr. Uh, uh, um, um, Yahoo's photo, um, uh, uh, photo um, sharing uh, uh, app, kind of like uh, what uh, Instagram is for Facebook, um, Flickr is for, for Yahoo, but nobody really uses Flickr. Flickr has gone by the wayside because Yahoo really didn't pay enough attention to it. But according to a report by CNET, Yahoo has confirmed that they have bought Tumblr for $1.1 billion. 1.1 billion. Who knew Yahoo had that kind of cash still that they could make that acquisition? And Marissa Meyer, her quote says she promises not to screw it up. That's what she says because many people are saying, man, can Marissa Meyer, does she really know what she's doing? Now the blogging site, according to a report by CNET, will remain a separate entity after the mostly, mostly cash deal <clears throat> is completed. Now, this is mostly cash and then, you know, some stocks and so forth. Yahoo says that uh, says with 